What a long, slow road it is to Europe. For years now, Montenegro has flown the EU flag next to its own double-headed eagle. However, nothing's changed in this small 13,000 square kilometer country, used to existing under the pressure of greater powers. Cetinje is the former capital of what used to be a kingdom before becoming part of Yugoslavia and regaining its independence in 2006. Some of the old embassies of the time have survived near the old royal palace. Bole Boscovic, a musician and local historian, notes somewhat resignedly that carving out a place is every bit as difficult today. Da tako kažem taj spoljni pritisak od strane ovaj Rusije definitivno istorija se ponavlja. Although Montenegro has been clearly displaying its support for Ukraine, it's got an historically Russophile population, an Orthodox Church, and a Slavic language. All these factors make it hard not to see a huge gap between the East and the West. Vrlo težak i vrlo opasan moment. Ne smijemo zaboraviti da je Crna Gora sa svojom površinom izuzetno mala, da imamo 650.000 stanovnika, ali ne smijemo i sa druge strane pogledati stranu medalja, to je da smo izuzetno važna pozicija i geostrateški, pa ako hoćete i vojno, i mislim da nije slučajno što smo ušli u NATO i na taj način obezbijedili dobru poziciju Crne Gore u sadašnjim turbulentnim godinama. The highlight of the summer for this mountainous country, however, will be the opening of its first motorway, which connects its modern capital, Podgorica, to Serbia in the northeast. In time, this motorway is slated to make its way down to the harbour city of Bar on the Adriatic coast. A Chinese construction company is in charge of the project, as Beijing is aiming to establish new trade corridors across the Balkans and, if possible, gain control of any important ports. However, the motorway was very expensive to build, costing a billion euros for a stretch of just 40 kilometers. Montenegro is heavily indebted. Last year, it had to call on Europe to help it keep up with its payments. Tani is a restaurant at the foot of the overpass. It won't see drivers stopping in anymore, but the customers are mostly pleased with that, given how dangerous the old road that followed the river was. The price of it was eye-watering. 26 million euros for each kilometer. And unless Montenegro pays back its debt to the Chinese, the contract stipulates that the latter get the port of Bar. These outrageous terms are decried by the NGO MANS, which is also speaking out against the system of corruption. Implemented by Milo Dukanovic, the country's president and strongman for the past 30 years, the new prime minister has brought with him the only hope for change. You have interests of all these big, um, big countries overlapping, and unfortunately you have a political scene. Our politicians do not live up to their promises. You cannot hear any of them keeping up to some of the principles. Uh, they change their rhetoric and their strategies and their behavior from time to time in in many cases, depending on these foreign influences, whether those influences are positive or negative, they strongly influence the behavior of our politicians. So our citizens here, unfortunately, don't have many opportunities to decide about the future of this country. The new Prime Minister has brought with him the only hope for change. Before our interview with him, his team takes care to place the EU flag next to the NATO one. Dritana Bazovic is young. He's 36, a member of the Albanian minority population, a non-practicing Muslim, and a believer in the country's EU membership prospects, despite how the situation has changed. I think that the uh, situation after the aggression of Russia Federation in Ukraine uh, make everybody to think in some different way. So Europe has two solutions. For solution number one is to go uh, deeply in enlargement to promote more solidarity, to be more attractive for the countries which want to join the EU. Or second, it's to still promote some politics of confusion, which in the end of the day make a lot of risk. I think that the country in Western Balkan don't need to be the black hole in the Europe. I think that for security in the Europe, it's very important to have the involving of this country in EU. 
Out of all of the countries in the region aiming to join the EU, Montenegro, which Brussels officially recognized as a candidate country in 2010, is the farthest along in its application process. Today, however, the EU has turned its favor to Ukraine and Moldova. Worse still, their large neighbor, Serbia, whose fate Montenegro shared for the longest time, is ambivalent towards Vladimir Putin's Russia. In the meantime, the pro-Europeans are continuing their work. Among them is journalist and activist Milka Tadic, who has previously fought against nationalism in former Yugoslavia and now fights for membership in the EU. But she fears the war in Ukraine might put the Balkans on the back burner. These countries, uh, if uh, they will not be a part of the EU, of what they will be a part? What will be with the Russian influence in the region? Um, not just Russian, with the Chinese in interest, because we have a lot of investments uh, from China and, of course, from Russia and from the other countries. So if we are not part of the EU, of what we will be a part. Most foreign investments in Montenegro don't come from the EU. Tourism is the country's biggest source of revenue, and the Adriatic coast is highly sought after. Budva is the glitz capital of the country. Tourists coming from Russia, Belarus and Ukraine have transformed the town entirely, but not only for the better. Concrete reigns supreme. There are construction sites that have been left unfinished by shady foreign companies. The words mafia and corruption keep rearing their ugly heads here. Budva's historic center is what Svetlana, an immigrant from Moscow, wanted to show us before anything else. It's the куда я пришла, когда оказалась в Будве в конце прошлого лета. Я занималась в России гражданским посвящением, и наша организация была признана сначала иностранным агентом, потом нежелательной организацией. И а, я бы даже продолжала и дальше, но э, наши адвокаты и юристы разумные люди, и они закрыли эту организацию. И, а семья тем временем, э, у нее был, была причина, у детей была причина, они хотели поехать сюда. She and her husband ran private schools in Moscow, but she opted to keep up her fight from Montenegro rather than taking it easy. Если я раньше понимала, что я могу там что-то продолжать делать до войны и делала бы и делала, когда там находилась, то после войны мои, э, мои личные инструменты, а это ин инструменты просвещения, открытости, э, говорить то, что ты просто видишь, э, и все как бы, да, вот такого ненасильственного, мирного, но тем не менее гражданского сопротивления, они исчерпаны там. А здесь, а как оказалось, это случайно так все получилось, принято в смысле того, что это естественная реакция. Мы понимали, что будут беженцы, и им негде жить, потому что в стране нет никакой государственной поддержки. Но здесь мне понятно, как бы, почему я здесь оказалась, по крайней мере. She's now one of the sponsors financing housing for the 10,000 Ukrainian refugees that fled here, like Lena and her two children, who came from Odessa. Когда я здесь оказалась, и когда ребята, которые из Москвы, вот я говорю, у меня мурашки, которые помогают именно, ребята вот из России помогают нам и понимают, что то, что происходит, это ненормально. И для меня даже вот это было больше э, помощь. Я и дети, мы в безопасности, благодаря ребятам, которые, которые тоже страдают. Я пойму, то есть я ожидаю, что человек, например, узнает и, не знаю, плюнет мне в лицо просто сразу же, и я пойму, почему это произошло. Like many of the Russians against the war, Svetlana asks herself where she'll belong in the future. The Russians in Budva have brought clothes to the Ukrainian refugee intake center. Here in Montenegro, they have room to talk. <laughs> Я не чувствую себя виноватым, или наоборот, я чувствую себя виноватым. А если я не чувствую, если я не виновен, то кто, то кто виноват? То есть всегда вот такой вот вопрос я слышу. Нет, ну так, спасибо, да, но 
Коллективная вина, она, я считаю, вредна в том смысле, что если все вина, виноваты, значит, ну, как бы никто конкретно не виноват. Но вот коллективная ответственность, я лично ее как-то ощущаю. И это очень трудный вопрос сейчас, потому что, ну, то есть мы точно что-то пропустили в прошлом своем. Это без сомнения. Наверное, если бы мы все понимали, к чему это все приведет, мы все, все делали бы что-то больше. Будва is replete with Russians who understood a long time ago that their country was courting its own demise. Inside his luxury beachfront residence, in front of which wealthy Ukrainians park their huge cars next to the Russians, Marat Guelman is a gallery owner who collects contemporary art from both countries. Я не считаю себя беженцем. Я в 2014 году уехал из России, ну как протест. Вообще нежелание участвовать в войне. Было понятно, когда Россия захватила Крым, уже было понятно, что все это закончится войной. Helped by other exiled Russian billionaires, he organizes cultural events in Budva. To him, Montenegro is the perfect place from which to restore peace. Я думаю, что для Черногории э, эта война это как раз наоборот шанс. Шанс избавиться от таких сентиментов по отношению к России. Вот. Шанс получить очень качественных резидентов новых, новых жителей, которые приезжают сюда из России, из Украины. Шанс быстрее, чем раньше полагалось, стать членом ЕС. Здесь, мне кажется, идеальная площадка для того, чтобы что-то произошло что-то новое выросло между русскими и украинцами. As much a meeting place as a seismic zone between the two blocks, the Balkans have returned to their once and always calling. Today, unfortunately, Montenegro's European integration is the price of that rebirth, as much as the tiny nation would like to set its own course without getting hijacked along the way.